வணக்கம் தேர் ஆர் மெனி டைலமாஸ் இன் ஹேண்ட் சர்ஜரி ஆஸ் அ மேட்டர் ஆஃப் ஃபேக்ட் ஈவன் அ சீமிங்லி டைரக்ட் ஆர் சிம்பிள் ப்ராப்ளம் லைக் அ மெட்டகாப்பிள் ஃப்ராக்சர் ஹேஸ் மெனி டைலமாஸ் வி ஷெல் சி வாட் ஆர் தீஸ் டைலமாஸ் தட் எக்ஸிஸ்ட் இன் மெட்டகாப்பிள் ஃப்ராக்சர் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் The dilemmas in metacarpal fracture management actually begin with the diagnosis itself. Is there a fracture or not? Then comes the decision making. Should we fix the fracture or treat it conservatively? And if we decide to fix, should it be a closed fixation or open fixation? And what should be the method of fixation, K-wire or plate and screw? There are dilemmas in techniques also. If K-wire fixation is to be done, should the K-wire be passed proximodistal or or distoproximal and if plate and screw fixation is to be done is it to be applied on the lateral aspect or the dorsal aspect of the metacarpal and should we use locking or non locking plates it doesn't stop with the treatment in the post operative period should we immobilize or mobilize and in the commonly occurring boxer's fracture when and how should we fix it making the diagnosis is simple but sometimes it is just a swelling that is seen in the hand which may reveal fractures on x-ray in blunt injuries we should definitely look for three signs shortening angulation and rotation in this hand you can make out a shortening of the middle finger and that is because of the fracture of the shaft of the third metacarpal bone once the reduction and fixation of the metacarpal shaft fracture is done the length of the finger is restored in this clinical example you can make out apparent shortening of the index finger angulation on the dorsum over the second metacarpal bone and extensor lag at the metacarpophalangeal joint of the index finger all these are typical findings in a shaft fracture of the metacarpal in this x ray we can make out a fracture of the base of proximal phalanx of little finger but if you look at the clinical finding you will note a rotation on the ring finger and a loss of the knuckle prominence on the ring finger if we go back to the x ray and see it we will note a fracture of the neck of the fourth metacarpal also the first dilemma in the management is the decision making should we fix it or should we manage the fracture of the metacarpal conservatively here you can see a fracture of the neck of the second metacarpal bone managed conservatively with only a pop and good clinical results So the general rule is in simple fractures of the metacarpals we must try for conservative management but this will be possible only if we get good reduction using the jaws maneuver and also be able to maintain reduction with immobilization and this should be done with a snug pop placing the metacarpophalangeal joint in 90 degrees of flexion if it is not amenable for conservative management we need to fix it but for fixation should we do the closed method or the open method the indications for closed reduction and fixation are significant angulation shortening or rotation involvement of marginal metacarpal fractures and multiple metacarpal fractures and reducible but unstable fractures once closed reduction of the fracture is done percutaneous pinning can be done using pre bent k wires this will be minimally invasive it is versatile and we can start early mobilization this can also be done by a cortical window made at the base of the metacarpal and using 3 or 4 pre bent approximately 30 degrees 0.9 mm pins inserted and buried within the medullary canal this is called the bouquet wiring but for some fractures we will have to do open reduction and fixation apart from the indications mentioned earlier open injuries with fractures and irreducible fractures must be subjected to open reduction and fixation this clinical example shows an open wound with fractured dislocations of the base of the second third fourth and fifth metacarpals which have been fixed with k wires the results can be noted the next decision that must be taken is whether to use a k wire for fixation or plate and screw for fixation as far as k wires are concerned they are easily available and they can be used by a simple technique but they have an axial instability so if we use k wires we need additional support either internal in the form of another k wire 
or external in the form of a POP. Platen screws give ideal fixation and early mobilization can be started. But there is a risk of tendon adhesions as the tendons glide over the plate. Lag screws can also be used in spiral or oblique fractures of the metacarpals. In this clinical example, with a blunt injury on the hand with multiple fracture dislocations, K-wire fixation alone has been done and it gives good results. The other advantage of using K-wires is that these implants are removed unlike the plate and screws. But when passing K-wires, how should these wires be passed? Proximodistal or distoproximal? Generally, K-wires can be passed proximodistally, passing the wire proximally, then through the fracture site into the distal segment, or distoproximally, passing the wire first into the distal segment and then into the proximal segment, or retrograde from the head of the metacarpal. Among these, passing the K-wire proximodistally is ideal because it causes least damage to the metacarpophalangeal joint, which is very important. On the other hand, if we are going to use plate and screws for fixation of metacarpal fractures, should we place them on the lateral aspect of the metacarpal or on the dorsal aspect? Dorsal fixation gives most mechanical stability, but there is a risk of extensor tendon additions and it may be palpable under the skin. So it can be reserved for neck fractures, third and fourth metacarpal fractures, while lateral fixation has less mechanical stability but reduced risk of additions. So it can be used for shaft fractures and second and fifth metacarpal fractures. And as far as plate and screw fixation is concerned, should we use locking screws or non-locking system? When we use locking head screws, the plate is not pressed against the bone, but it provides adequate rigidity, that is load-bearing osteosynthesis. The plate bears all the forces that are going to be transmitted. Let us compare locking and non-locking system of plate and screws for metacarpal fractures so that we can understand which system we use for which condition. There is higher stability with the locking system and this is provided with minimal contact to the bone. Whereas in non-locking system, you must have a good bone to plate contact. In the locking system, the blood supply of the bone is maintained whereas it is reduced in the non-locking system or the conventional system of plate and screws. The cost is a little more with the locking system and the type of bone healing is primary in this system. That is because in the non-locking system, micro movements occur leading to secondary healing. Hence the locking plate system can be used for osteoporotic bones, multifragmentary fractures or intraarticular fractures whereas the non-locking system can be used when there is a good bone stock available on both sides of the fracture. After the management, the post-operative treatment is also very important. Should we immobilize or mobilize? When plate and screw fixation is done, we can start early mobilization, but we must still provide some amount of support. With K-wires, it is different. In this example, you can see a very good fixation of the 4th and 5th metacarpal shaft and neck respectively fixed with axial K-wires. But the K-wires were removed at 3 weeks and mobilization was started with no support. See how the 5th metacarpal has collapsed again leading to a deformity. This happens because the forces of flexion on the volar aspect of the metacarpal that is the compression side of the metacarpal are more than the forces acting on the dorsal aspect, otherwise known as the tension side of the metacarpal. So if no support is given when mobilization is started, it tends to bend. It tends to bend because the callus is still soft. So when K-wire fixation is done, we need to remove the POP at 3 weeks, start mobilization with the K-wire in situ and remove the K-wire only after one more week. And even then we need to provide a volar wrist stabilization support when we start mobilization. Of course, we will be concentrating on mobilization of the metacarpophalangeal joint, both active and passive. The boxer's fracture 
or a fracture of the neck of the fifth metacarpal is quite common. Should we fix these fractures? Usually we need to fix it because it is a marginal finger fracture and if the angulation is more than 30 degrees, it is ideal to fix this fracture. There are three commonly used methods of fixation of such fractures. K-wires, circlage compression wiring or tension band wiring and the use of plate and screws. Plate and screw fixation can be done using the locking system. We can start quick mobilization. But there is always the risk of tendon adhesions and the palpable hardware. Circlage compression wiring uses the principle of tension band wiring where the tension forces are converted to compression forces. This fixation is done by using stainless steel wire of 24 gauge which is passed first through the distal segment by a drill hole and then passed through the proximal segment through a transverse drill hole and knotted in the form of an 8 after reducing and compressing the fracture. The advantage of this technique is that it provides good compression at the fracture site but the disadvantage is that the wire is left in situ which may get infected later. K-wire fixation can also be used in these fractures. They are simple and the implant can be removed but we need to rely on good immobilization that is keeping the metacarpophalangeal joint in 90 degrees and we need to rely on patient compliance. Here the fracture is being reduced and fixation has been done. We make sure that the metacarpophalangeal joint is free. This is the healing of the fracture and this is the movement of the finger showing complete flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joint of the little finger and the knuckle prominence is also seen normally. So all the dilemmas that we have seen in metacarpal fracture management can be solved very easily if we understand the aims. Good reduction and maintenance of reduction. Starting mobilization depending on the method of immobilization or fixation. And supporting the fracture when we start mobilization. And needless to say, a good follow-up is absolutely essential to ensure good results. Thank you. I hope you liked the video. I enjoyed making it. Please stay tuned for more of these Dilemmas in Hand Surgery series in which we shall talk about the different dilemmas that exist in the management of different hand conditions. Do not forget to subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning, hand surgery, plastic surgery, trauma surgery and ethics.